Hello everyone, you're with Kreen Racing from The Crew Coach on The Wellbeing Project. My background is in psychology and organizational psychology. I was working as crew in the industry over a decade ago, and I now support crew in the areas of leadership and mental health. I do this through my Guess I Army Advanced Leadership Course, Online Counseling, and Exclusive Membership for Yacht Crew. This week on Yachting International Radio, I interview Nadine, who shares her experience around yacht management and DPA. I did a poll on social media recently, and I received an influx of messages from crew, one of them being Nadine. So I'm very grateful for her to come on the show and share her experiences with us. So we had an influx of crew participate in the poll and share their experiences. Nadine was one of them, and I'd like to welcome Nadine to this particular show and having the courage to share her experiences because I've no doubt that this will help others. Often we can feel very alone or isolated in our situation, but hearing someone who's gone through a very similar experience kind of normalizes and not that bad behaviors that occur on board should be normalized, but you've got a sense that you're not alone in this process. So welcome Nadine. Thank you very much, Corinne, for having me. I'm very excited. Excellent. Well, the timing is perfect. I've got the telephone ringing in the background. I mean, who has a landline these days? <laughs> Only on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into it. Nadine, do you mind sharing a little bit about you in terms of how long you've been working in the industry for and your current position? Of course. So I have been in the industry for about nine years. Like I said, that solidifies me in the dinosaur department, I think. Um, I've recently some, taken some time out of the industry, which turned out to be one of the best decisions I could have made. So highly recommended for anybody that considers it. Um, during that time, I started doing my Yacht Person course with uh, Sandra Jordan, obviously one of your very good friends through the Yacht Person. Um, and that ultimately was the starting point to think a bit more about, um, you know, standing up for what's right, um, personality types, resources out there for people to support yacht crew a little bit more. I had time to think about my journey and the experiences I've had on boats and, you know, that feeling when you go to your cabin at night, you shut your door and there's just this uneasiness that whatever you've seen or whatever you've been part of today, um, how can you ask for help? Who's there to turn to? I felt like that before and I know a lot of other people have felt like that. And it's a shame that there's not more support or structures in place to support crew. Um, so I think currently my title is somewhere in the in the region of second slew, slew slash aspiring person. Um, and to be honest with you, I think 50% of my yachting experience has been very positive. 50% has been negative, unfortunately, specifically the last two vessels that I've worked on. Um, they've been new builds and specifically within that environment, you get to, everything's super transparent between owner, owner's rep, management company, and then um, where does the crew fit in all to this? So that ultimately led me to, to just have a bit of um, more critical thinking about what's going on in the yachting structure. You know, I felt unsafe on board vessels. There was times where I lost all confidence in leadership. Um, and, and, and I know from the poll that you put out that there's a common thread of all of that that runs through many people's heads and thoughts. I think yachting is incredible. I think it can be better at this stage. Okay. So was there a particular response in the poll and where crew shared their experiences that struck you? Yeah, so I think it was just when there were so many people complaining specifically about how the one person that name you have to know from the start when you walk in onto a boat the dpa mm. i mean that gets asked in our drill quizzes and our accw and that's the name you need to know um was ultimately the person that didn't really support crew the most i mean if we look at the the dpa's description what is their job they're the middleman between the vessel and flag and the management company there's very little human resources elements involved into that job description. So often you sit with a person where you don't feel comfortable sharing whatever's going on board. You sit with an independent land-based person that carries no 
a true understanding of what's been going on board the vessel. But ultimately, that person is employed by the owner um, and the management company. So mm -hmm. if he's going to need to make a decision, it's going to be easy to sway that decision towards the benefit of the owner and say, for instance, the management company versus a junior crew member or whoever is the person that complained. And I think that needs to be changed. Okay, so I know that in your message to me, you said that DPA is simply a name in the crew mess and what you've just mm -hmm. highlighted there supports that. So if you can expand on that a little bit more, what does that mean to you? And what should it be for DPA? So in my opinion, the DPA shouldn't be the it, this is now purely my opinion, but it shouldn't be the person that is in charge of the crew well-being or the human resources element. It should be a completely separate, independent, land-based party that is just focused on HR and on crew. Um, and somebody that actually forms a relationship with the culture on board, where, you know, surveys are being done or profiling is being done, consists on a consistent basis to see you know, what is the culture on board like? Is there really any red flags? Is there anything that needs to be addressed um, on the crew on an emotional level? Um, psychologically, people need to check in with themselves, but unfortunately in our industry, you have a lot of people that don't like to enjoy doing that. They don't like introspect. They don't like figuring out, you know, what can I do better? And especially sometimes with leaders, I think I mentioned this on, on our chat as well. Um, I find it so refreshing when leaders have a big desire to improve themselves and to show the crew, I'm doing this course or this leadership course because I want to be better. And that's the type of leaders you know we want. Mm. So in terms of like a human resources element, my opinion is the DPA should remain the middleman between whatever his job description is. But in terms of human resources, it should be a completely separate land-based entity that's got some sort of you know psychological training like how to work in terms of negotiation and confrontation and a person like yourself which which specializes in in that because otherwise you have a conflict of interest mm. anywhere where there's money or power involved that's how the world works you mm. know that's always going to take the president so yeah i think that is ultimately the solution is finding a company that fo solely focuses on that on crew on those elements mm. I agree. There shouldn't be any collusion of any sort or personal relationships when it comes to such a party because then exactly. confidentiality can be breached and yeah, that relationship cha changes in nature. So yacht management companies now don't mm -hmm. want to slam them. They serve a purpose, but what is your understanding of their purpose from a cruise perspective? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, because specifically my my recent experiences has been new builds, I've had a little bit of an inside look into everything in terms of I've seen obviously yacht management companies are very involved when yachts are being built or the whole like brokerage mm -hmm. element of it. So, you know, you meet the individuals that work for them. You have a lot to do with them and their intentions aren't bad or it's unfortunately the whole structure that a yacht management company is built on is ultimately conflicting. If I think of a yacht management company, I think of three things. One, they're employed by the owner. So ultimately, they need to look after the owner's finances and benefit the owner. Whenever there's money in play, that takes precedent. I don't care what people say, but it does. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're also the vessel's ISM partner. So the same structure that's supposed to be looking after the owner, his wealth, his happiness, is now supposed to be looking after the vessel's crew safety and security. That's already a conflict of interest. Now, on the third leg, you've got them being the closest thing we have to like a human resources element. So now we've got this structure that's supposed to be protecting us, but we're third in line. So that's just never, that's just never going to work. Wherever there's like financial responsibilities, now you've got safety management on top of it. That's a direct conflict of interest. Um, so that's the first issue with, I think the whole structures of how, and the majority majority of men, and I don't know all of them, but they all follow this recipe. And up until that recipe has changed, nothing else is gonna change because they're trying to satisfy too many areas 
but ultimately the focus is going to be the owner and the finances because that's their income. So I totally get it. But you can't also then be a chameleon and do safety and security because I've worked on boats where, you know, ISM has been a little bit brushed under the carpet if there was, how can I say, in terms of satisfying an owner or you're pushing for his needs. And that ultimately leads the crew to feel unsafe again because I feel quite, quite, quite passionate about things should be done, you know, correctly from the start and be super transparent. Um, so the only way that we can fix this is you have one company, the management company focuses on finances, works for the owner, you know, that's their drive. You have a completely separate management company that runs the ISM independently. And these two get man managed by flag and monitored that there's no conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. That's how that ISM company partner makes their money again. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your shore based HR consultancy company that we just spoke about that focuses on the crew well-being in the working environment. Nadine, I can see that you've given a lot of thought into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm most impressed. I'm most impressed. Is my answer too long? <laughs> no, I love the thoroughness. And if there were 20 of me, I would have started this HR company many years ago. But at this moment in time, there's one of me and a five month old baby. So it's very difficult. <laughs> so the baby's got about 18, 19 years to wait and then uh, they slot in. Right, hopefully it'll be a lot sooner. Okay. <laughs> no, Tim, I can see that you care. And I think you mentioned in our chat about morals and values and I think it's important to treat people like people and mm. to, you know, as human beings, we have a duty of care, no matter what position you're in, you've got a duty of care. So you mentioned transparency, working on new builds. It sounds like to me, you were exposed to things that you've never seen before. Are you happy to talk about that? Yes, I think, um, Ultimately, there's going to be things in yachting. I mean, we know when we join the industry, it's driven by money and power. And when that comes into the mix, sometimes the wrong decisions are going to be made or things are going to be swept under the carpet. So I understand that um, because I chose to work, you know, into this industry. But um, with my last, specifically last new build, um, I think too many of these moments, these really uncomfortable, uneasy moments started happening where you work in a seniority position and you've got your junior crew member starting to feel unsafe or starting to feel uncomfortable or have this built up frustration about a vessel that's not even launched because they, 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 how can I say, witnessing essentially like a power circus. Um, and um, to be that to be already the start of a project that's supposed to be fun and exciting and new, to me was just a terrible shame. So, um, I don't know. I think the recipe, what yacht management companies are trying to achieve is pure and honest, but it just doesn't balance with the rest of the things that they're trying to manage. It's it's too many, um, it's like my fiance says, there's too many chiefs, not enough Indians, where there's too many things that needs to be done and plans that set up, but there's not enough people to ultimately do the work. And that's what I experienced specifically on um, on the last project that I was ultimately involved with where you speak with people from the management companies, but ultimately they're also reliant on the owner's needs and desires and decisions. And you need a strong um, company with a backbone that can say no to the owner and manage their ex expectations. And unfortunately that wasn't present at all in, in, in that process, uh, mm -hmm. which put a lot of stress on the crew, on the HRDs, uh, which should have never been there. Yeah, okay. What support was made available for crew who were feeling under extreme stress and pressure? None, to be honest. Mm. Um, I, on a personal level, you try to be there emotionally as much as you can for people and try to um, encourage them, but you can't, you can't hide things, you know? You can't, um, the reality is when they're there, it's there. Um, we went through a couple of captains and changed, so the, the uh, captaincy and like our leader consistently changed and that was also a big element which um, put a feeling of uneasiness in all of us um, and 
so so yes there was there was there was no support really mm. um there was just all of us looking towards a train that's going to be hitting a brick wall and you're either on it or you're off it but or even inevitably you know what was going to happen and what it was going to lead to so to me that was quite a shame okay. and the whole process yeah okay so with regards to the structure that we work in in yachting mm -hmm. a hierarchical structure and you mentioned it being very top heavy the mm -hmm. issues come in i believe with the type of management style the leader chooses to employ mm -hmm. and with a lot of let's say old school heads of departments captains the mm -hmm. autocratic style of leadership is mm -hmm. not suitable for all situations yes if okay. there is a crisis on board or there is a fire on board for example and you need to direct people very efficiently then absolutely but in terms of everyday style of management i don't believe it's the way forward mm -hmm. what are you or based on your experience what leadership style has been effective and non-effective so a leader that you've worked under who you've admired and what have you admired them for and someone that you perhaps don't respect and what are the reasons for that i'll start off with the the bad one first and then work myself to the good side yeah um unfortunately a lot of leaders get chosen on vessels especially especially when it's private vessels too um based on who the owner likes and who the owner can stomach around him or her mm -hmm. and a lot of the times it's not the best leader so you get people jumping the ladder which are not ready for roles not ready for the responsibility and it's absolutely no um clue how to manage a team and everything that goes with it that now reaches the top um and and ultimately the owner only cares about seeing that person in in the top and not everything else that happens behind the scenes because it get it gets covered up so if i've had a couple of situations where that was the case um and where we all know it's not somebody that's been chosen on merit and when that specifically happens you already have a little less faith in that person than you should have or then this or then the person that you thought was going to get the leadership role because they all completely deserve it and they're the hardest worker. So now you put into a position where you think, "Oh, okay, well, I have to play the game right then, otherwise I'm not going to get to the top." And nobody of us wants to really think like that. But when that becomes a, a part of an element into the whole equation, then um and actually you do find yourself sometimes playing the game a bit and I'd step back and be like, "Oh, that's not me. That's not <laughs> mm. that's not who I am." Mm. So um a lot of my um experience as I got older and as I moved into leadership has been you know structures to protect me against things that's happening around me and 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 that to me is just that shouldn't even be there I shouldn't even be putting my energy into these protecting structures so that whatever is happening on the boat doesn't affect me as long as I'm doing my job right that's okay mm. um and then with good leaders I think um communication um and leaders being truthful about when they've um made mistakes when they don't know the answers i think we live in a day and age where sometimes people just don't listen do they the immediate reaction is to just respond and i find that a lot in yachting like you have to know the answer you have to always have a solution mm. i had a leader once where she said do you know what i don't actually have the answer to this i'm going to get back to you on it later today or maybe tomorrow just let me have a think about it Mm. And I and I really respected that and I kind of incorporated that into my own management style because that's very important to check in with your team every morning and every evening so that you can pick up if there's if there's anything going on not not so much on a work base but to performance manage them in a healthy positive way but that's not just the job list you're ticking off it's also picking up when there's an uneasiness in your team and that needs to be addressed instantly especially when you work with a, a bunch of girls unfortunately we are obviously a bit more hormone driven and we don't like to talk about things as I mean guys fight it out and it's done and it's over we we build up we're like volcanoes aren't we mm -hmm. um and i think a lot of the times leaders can or chief stewards or can pick up on that and they don't sit their team down and be like right we need to talk about it let's get it all out there it builds up it builds up it builds up and it all, and it creates cattiness and 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 that to me is very very unfortunate 
So I think, um, yes, communication and truly listening to your team and being honest when you don't have all the answers is what I respect the most. Mm, I love that. That's called vulnerability. And it is. It's yes. really yes. important right. because it makes you more approachable and it's a fast way to build a rapport with your team members. So exactly. two more questions for you. The mm -hmm. second to last, um, if someone is self-doubting so say something happens on board and you're like did that really happen is that normal hmm. what would your suggestion be with someone who's sitting with that information and is perhaps fearful or feels that their safety is threatened I've unfortunately only worked on boats where there wasn't a structure put in place to report these these type of things because ultimately when when you're dealing with an uncomfortable situation you want to go to somebody that you know a has got your back and b has had the loyalty to either keep it to themselves and to deal you deal with you through it but not to um how can i say take it to the wrong people you want to have that and that means that that means that there needs to be a person that is in charge of that i think that say for instance if you look at um management companies right they appoint these safety officers on board which is a completely like independent appointment based on your cv and your qualifications we have a safety officer on board they look after the health and safety environment that's their job so if anything if anything happens it's you know it's not the master you go to that person I think exactly the same should happen with a human resources officer on board. Mm. You've got your re your management company. They look at everyone's all the all of the HRD CVs. They see hmm, this person is definitely more skilled. They've invested into management courses, or they've done sort of some sort of HR course. Let's give it to this person. Completely independent from the master, because let's face it, you know, the captains can't always get everywhere where they should. Understandably so. And you've got an independent person that focuses on the human resources elements. That person is on board. They know exactly the culture, what's going on. And any concerns or any uneasiness can be reported to that person. And then there's a process of working with it. Um, and I think that's where the role of the DPA kind of gets replaced, where you have to have someone on board to understand the culture and somebody that's qualified to deal with these things and issues and is selected for that. Mm. So ultimately, that would be my solution um but i think on the boat that i've worked on previously there's just not been any structure like that when i felt uneasy like i said i've had the opportunity to work with my partner for four years so he's been the person i've been you know talking about my feelings and thoughts which has helped me a lot but if you don't have that um i think it can become very hard and tricky and really isolating too yeah, what I'm hearing you say is the value of having psychological support as well mm. as the resources to manage difficult situations. And mm -hmm. I think I mentioned this to you on a voice note. Um, I have a membership that actually Sandra is a part of called TCC Tribe. And what mm -hmm. that does, it provides a safety net for crew members to come to, to discuss any challenges that they may have and get the relevant support. On top of that, they're continuously getting upskilled in very specific areas, whether it be leadership or stress management. Um, gosh, we've covered so many different topics, but it's at their disposable, disposal whenever they need. And I think that makes a huge difference, having a positive support network towards well, a building resilience around mental health. No, definitely, I agree. And this, this culture should be encouraged on board. Um, I think like we, every yacht has a certain budget for training that's provided for crew every year. Um, people that are going into potential leadership or has made a transition from a second to a first um, to a chief stew or, or just anybody that shows potential to go up in the leadership structure and um, that should be offered to crew. Mm -hmm. um, I think another important thing is also people reach the top but then there's nobody else to check up on them or check over their shoulder that they're actually doing their job. There's no performance review or management review format that's put in place on board vessels. In my opinion, you know, if you, you get to be captain, you need to be reviewed yearly by your ISM partner or quarterly or whatever that is. If you are an HOD, 
the captain reviews you again. You know, you should be writing out a job policy about what you want to achieve with this department. How are you going to get there? And then that, those goals need to be reviewed so that there's this thing of, you're at the top, but you can't just do anything you want to do because that is unfortunately an environment that's been created on board, specifically arts. Um, so that to me would be a very important um, important starting point is just get a management review format system on board for captains and for HRDs so that people know once they've reached leadership positions, it's a position of power, isn't it? You've got so much influence. You've got so much opportunity to good, do good. Why would you use that for bad then? And then for um, potential leaders or leaders in positions, it should be compulsory to do these HR management courses. You've got, because not everyone, like I said, has got the ability to on a psychological check, um, check in with themselves or, you know, have, have carry introspect or even see sometimes what they're truly doing wrong so that they can improve themselves. Mm. Um, and I think that should be, that should definitely be focused on. Mm. Well, I'm pleased to say that we cover that in the crew coach three month advanced okay. leadership course, <laughs> which I hope one day you will do. But yeah, we yes. go into depth about performance reviews. I highly believe in 360 degree performance reviews. I've seen some performance reviews conducted by your management companies and it's very brief. It's like a tick and flick and you're not eliciting mm-hmm. any information whatsoever. And yeah, that's not doing anyone any favors. So I think looking at what the gaps are in terms of how to create a fully functioning team and then closing those gaps with knowledge, the right knowledge is critical. Yes, no, you, you're 100% correct. Nadine, thank you for your time. Thank you for your share and your valuable experiences and insights. I really, really appreciate it. I have no doubt our listeners are going to walk away with many takeaways. And thank you and what you're doing for the community and you know putting your neck out there for people. It's really seen and it doesn't... Um, I hope it gives you the the same reward that it gives for people like us. So I really appreciated this interview. Oh, thank you, Nadine. Thank you.